Hey guys, how's it going? So in this tutorial, I'll be showing you guys how to read a .sif, that is a crystallographic information file. So if you are a computational condensed matter physicist or a computational chemist, then probably at some point in time, you must have encountered different kinds of, you know, molecular file types such as a .xyz file or a .mol file. And similarly, for periodic or solid systems, you must have encountered a .sif file. So let's just say today, um, what we want to do is you want to run some calculations on a silicon crystal. So you'll go to your Google or any other search engine, and then um, you look for, you know, silicon sif file or something. And then usually there are a few databases that provide such files. So one of the most popular ones is the AMCSD database. Then another very great database is provided by the materials project.org and then crystallography.net and so on. So these are the top three or my favorite top three databases. So let's just go ahead and open this one from the AMCSD and also let's just go ahead and open from the materialsproject.org as well because there are some key differences that I will be discussing later on. So let's just do that. So coming to AMCSD, American Mineralogist Crystal Structure Database. So here you can see that they have a variety of, you know, silicon crystal structures. And here you can see that where these, you know, uh, parameters in the files are derived from. So you have the publication as well as I think the title of the paper. And then, you know, some more, um, you know, information regarding the temperature and all that stuff. So if you want to be looking at the, you know, equilibrium structure, then you'll are at the room temperature, then you'll probably check this, uh, the structures, you know, produced at 300 K or 25 degrees Celsius or something like that. So anywho, come to the first entry and then just go ahead and click on view text file as well as download it. So I'll just download it. Um, Okay. Okay. So I'll just go ahead and download it to my desktop um, on here and then just rename it silicon. Okay. And then coming back to the file, so we can either view it here or we can just go ahead and um, we can just go ahead and open it with a text editor such as notepad or notepad plus plus. So here I've opened it with Notepad++. Now the important thing here is, um, okay, so I don't like this file because uh, this thing, I don't like this. We'll look for some other silicon. So the reason I don't like it is because the position of the silicon atoms they have chosen, you know, for origin is 0 0.1003, which is a strained origin and not good for this video. So go ahead and download this one save as and then just replace the previous one yeah i hate that okay so here we have the new silicon you know dot zip file and here the atom position is zero 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 which i'll explain why did it matter although it won't usually matter if you're using further softwares but for the sake of the tutorial it mattered all right so coming to the information in the SIF file. So usually in .xyz file, what you have is you have the, okay, so I have one right here. So we'll just have a look at that. So usually in a .xyz file, and I'll probably make another video explaining the .xyz and .mol files. All right, uh, shit, I closed that. Anywho, so here is another .xyz file of a CO2 molecule. So it is pretty simple and straightforward. You have the number of molecules on the first line then a comment line, which is compulsory. And then you just have the atomic symbols and then their Cartesian coordinates. That is the XYZ coordinates. So coming back to crystallographic information file. Now, usually you must have seen that, you know, whenever you look at a silicon crystal structure in your books, then you must have noticed that it possesses or 
it crystallizes in a diamond FCC lattice. What that means is that there are atoms on the face centers as well as the corners of the you know, cube. But then there are some more atoms which are slightly displaced from the you know, face centered and thus a silicon structure usual, I mean, not usually, I mean, generally are always has eight non-equivalent atoms in its lattice. Now, what I mean by that is, um, go, let's just go ahead and, you know, Google a silicon crystal and just show you there. However, I could have shown you that with, you know, the softwares that I have as well, but um, let's just go ahead and open something online. So here you can see that a silicon unit cell has atoms at the corners, and there are some atoms at the face centers. This one, this one, this one, this one, and this one. So there are atoms at the face centers, and then there are some atoms slightly displaced from the face center. So slightly displaced from this face center is this atom, from this one is this, from this one is this. So Okay, so the total number of non-equivalent atoms that you can see here is the this atom at the corner is equivalent to all the atoms at the corners. So there's one atom here. Then the face center atoms. Um, so this atom is equivalent to the atom on the opposite face. So overall, there are three atoms at the faces that are equivalent and uh, non-equivalent or unique. So we have till now one atom at the corner and then three at the faces. So there are four atoms at non-equivalent positions. And then there are four atoms inside the lattice, which are of course unique because you cannot, you know, translate them to, I mean, of course, uh, you will create another unit cell after it using translations, but at least this whole unit, uh, the atom is not being shared by multiple unit cells while the corner atoms are being shared by eight unit cells and the phase atoms are sh being shared by two unit cells. So that is the takeaway from, you know, your textbooks that silicon atom in cubic symmetry and mind you, this symmetry is a, I mean, this is a non, I'm um, sorry, uh, this is a conventional unit cell, I believe they call it. And it's not a primitive unit cell, and that is obvious because um, a you know primitive unit cell only has a single lattice point. So you know the points must be you know um, how to explain it. So. In a conventional unit cell, there are points at the corners. However, in a FCC, you know, unit cell, cubic unit cell, then there are points at the faces as well. And that gives a, you know, lattice points of total four. So you have one lattice point at the corners and then there are lattice points at the faces. So that gives you a total of four. So this cubic unit cell of silicon is not a primitive unit cell as it has four lattice points. And then you must be wondering that if it has four lattice points, then how does it have eight non-equivalent atoms? So that is a you know popular doubt that I have seen people have and I had that myself for quite some time. But you see there is a difference between um, a lattice point and a basis. So what happens is there are two atoms, you know, for each lattice point in a silicon unit cell. So one is at the face and the other is slightly displaced. So the basis can have, you know, more than two atoms, oh, sorry, more than one atom. Um, for each lattice point and that is exactly how you will form a you know NaCl or something like that so although there are NaCl must have some you know specific conventional structure but then there is um, another atom associated with that lattice point as well so that is the thing so 
coming back to you know the conventional representation of silicon so this is the conventional unit cell representation and then there is a primitive unit cell of silicon as well um which um i don't remember uh, it although i should it is kind of like a you know all the angles are 60 degrees and then there's just one atom at the origin and then there is another atom associated with that lattice point that is slightly displaced. So of course, a primitive unit cell would only have a single lattice point. So that is the origin. And then two atoms are associated. That is the basis is composed of two silicon atoms. So that is that. And then coming back to, you know, our crystallographic information file. So till now, I have blabbered a lot about, you know, silicon um, unit cells and conventional and primitive unit cells. Now, the reason I did that is, so usually one would expect either a, you know, a crystallographic information file should provide the crystal information, right? So either it could provide the information for the conventional unit cell or it could provide the information for the primitive unit cell so it has provided either of those now here you can see that the alpha beta gamma angles are 90 degrees and uh, i of course i um I remember that i haven't explained the structure of the file as yet but just bear with me for a moment and of course it is intuitive that anything called cell length is corresponding to the lattice parameter a b c and then cell length alpha is 90 beta is 90 gamma is 90 of course it is pretty much self-explanatory so coming back so here you can see that the angles are 90 degrees so it's probably a conventional unit cell and of course it is and since the lattice parameters are themselves of those of you know conventional unit cells so in that case you must be wondering that since you know in a dot xyz file you would get the coordinates of the atoms then why do you only have a single coordinate or single cartesian coordinates for a single atom when you we just saw that you know a silicon crystal structure or unit cell has eight atoms eight non-equivalent atoms in a conventional unit cell and the funny thing is that if you go ahead and open this file in you know your favorite um you know visualizers such as a you know bura i have made several tutorials on this as well as vesta on that i have also made several tutorials so if you go ahead and open this file on my desktop then it will read all the atoms and show the crystal perfectly so this convention unit cell looks perfect and then the funny thing is if you go ahead to the atoms tab then you will see that there are only eight atom coordinates provided and that is exactly correct since you know silicon lat uh, unit cell has eight non-equivalent atoms so here you can see that this is the origin atom right here and all of the other atoms are equivalent to it. So just to make the representation, you know, intuitive and similar to what we see in textbooks, they place all these atoms. However, it is just as much common to not place these atoms because they're not equivalent, but it looks nice if we see these atoms as well. So, you know, there is only a single non-equivalent atom at the origin, and then we have two equivalent atoms at the face and then two more at these faces and then two more at these opposite faces and then there are some atoms inside the unit cell which are not at all shared by any other unit cell so those are the other four and the initial four so total of eight so how did burai or any of the software manage to read the positions of all the other atoms when in fact a crystallographic information file only had the position of a single atom and of course um you know the way to specify the atomic positions in a crystallographic information file is by creating a loop and then so this is the format and then you have the parameters that is the loop would be over the atomic site level then the atomic site fract x 
add atom side fract y atom side frac z and remember these have to be exactly these you cannot change these you know labels and then you will you know follow this structure so you have the atom side label at the first and then x and then y and then z and then one more thing is very important to remember is that these atom positions are in crystal coordinates or fractional coordinates so if an atom as is at the face center or the body center then you will have the coordinates 0 0.5 0 0.5 0 0.5 for body centered atoms so that is the crystal coordinate so coming back to the question that how is vesta or bri read able to read you know all the atomic positions then the answer lies in this data that is a loop over the space group symmetry operations so this you know is another you know you know kind of a label and you cannot really change this you know line so if you are going to create one yourself then you will have to give this line and then give the symmetry operations so of course you know it's a crystal so it has a variety of symmetry operations associated to it as well as a space group so that is specified over here underscore symmetry space group name so the space group and is uh, you know in the Herman Maguin or whatever you call it um, scheme so the space group is fd3 f3m is also i believe called fd3 bar m but that just equivalent so um the space um, group specifies the symmetry operations associated with that unit cell or the lattice and then these symmetry operations are mentioned in a you know crystallography information file in this form so what this means is if we you know apply these symmetry operations on the coordinates given in the file then we will be able to get new coordinates based on these symmetry operations so every symmetry operation you know if you plug the value of xyz as given here so if you plug zero 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 everywhere you see xyz so the first operation is the identity operation so it will you know give out zero 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 so you will get um you know coordinates of one atom that is zero 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 then you will apply the symmetry operations again the next one so you will get zero half plus zero that's half and half so you'll get the coordinates of you know you'll get another set of coordinates so zero half half then you'll get another set of coordinates here half zero half and then another half half zero and so on now th what may happen is a lot of uh, you know operations would generate a redundant coordinate so you'll already have a coordinate and then you will generate another similar coordinate so you just discard those so that is basically what bri or any other software that reads crystallography information file does it either tries to find out the symmetry operations given in the file and if they are not given if this data label or group is missing then and you know the atomic position is just single this one provided then they'll try to use this space group to and of course these symmetry operations are associated to this particular space group so they'll try to use this space group and the symmetry operations in the database to generate the lattice and if both of these are not provided then of course they are just going to you know display a single atom at the origin now coming back to what i told you about you know materialsproject.org so here is another oh so here they have shown the primitive unit cell representation of silicon yeah that's what i meant to show you so of course i told you guys that most of the ang i mean all the angles are i believe 60 degree yeah 60 degrees lattice parameters and then there's just um one lattice point that is at the origin um, also i believe that mm -hmm. so there's only one lattice point you know in a primitive unit cell and usually one places it at the origin however we can see here that they have displaced it so you have two atoms associated with a single lattice point that is at the origin and both of them are some distance apart so just 
you know, in a FCC primitive unit cell, there are two silicon atoms, but just one lattice point. And coming back to my point about materialsproject.org, so here you can download these zip files in different formats, so either primitive or the conventional. And symmetrized is also, I believe, conventional. So anyway, if you go ahead and download this conventional standard, then what you get is um, similar to this file over here that I have. So Matthias project basically, I believe, generates files using PyMedGen. And what this Python library does is it just basically says that let the space group name be P1 and it just, you know, ignores all the, uh, you know, space group and symmetry stuff and just, you know, um, create C or they provide the crystallography information file. So the, they provide the coordinates for all the atoms and then just a single symmetry operation that is X, Y, Z, and that's it. Now, what you can notice right here, as I'm also noticing right here is that there are some differences in the conventional of both these crystallography information files. And this is why when I wrote the my own software for reading these, I had a you know big uh, amount of trouble. That is because they change the keywords associated with different operations all the time. So here you can see that the keyword is symmetry quiv pause as X Y Z. However, here the keyword becomes symmetry. I'm sorry, space group, simop, operation X, Y, Z. So they use a lot of different standards. So usually softwares have to keep up with the different soft uh, standards used. Then they are also using an ID here, which wasn't being used here. Although since they are in a loop, so um, of course the loop handles all that stuff. And then there are a variety of more labels used in the atom, you know, data part. So here they also provide the atom type, site type symbol as well as the label. So label is basically just for labeling purposes. However, the type symbol basically tells the software that yeah, it is of his eye type. However, here you could see that they just use um, label here. So of course, softwares will have to keep up with uh, how to read it. And then um, what else? So here they also provide the site symmetry multiplicity which is one and then the occupancy so sometimes you could have you know some doping in the system so you'll want to you know specify the occupancy so you, let's say you dope another oxygen atom at the same position and sometimes uh, you know there are these kinds of structures and research going on those so you'll specify the uh, occupancy for silicon at this position as 0.5 and another atom as 0.5 as well so that is also some things that are done um yeah so that is um how you would go about reading a crystallography information file so the major takeaway is you just basically um the main you know goal behind this tutorial was to demystify the science behind how to get all those coordinates that these softwares you know extract from this single coordinate so that was the major takeaway from this tutorial however you also learned that of course there are basically in a crystal after information file there's always a you know these six um data um parameters about the abc lattice parameter as well as the alpha beta gamma and you can see that their names don't change across different formats and then there is variety of other information chemical formula cell volume and all that other stuff but of course cell volume can be calculated from this as well and the reason you know and um, to give you since this whole video is on dot zip file let me just also share some more information so the reason you know dot zip files were created was not for you know um, initially it wasn't for computer visualization so it was just you know a neat little way while uh, you know authors submitted their manuscripts and their research so it was a neat little way to you know summarize all this stuff that they found and then however you know with the advent of computers they started you know make this format more standard and more useful for computer reading and so of course you know every other database and 
some of that stuff you know initially they follow different formats so there's a lot of you know discrepancies across the formats but the good thing is most of the softwares are compatible with almost all of those however mine isn't so my software chrisx um you know which i developed recently so this one so i tried to make it compatible with most of the formats but of course i'm not perfect in programming uh don't get so much time so it doesn't you know sometimes it isn't able to do the stuff but so that is it that is how you read a .zip file so i hope this you know tutorial helped you guys a lot and in case it did then don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to my channel for more videos like this and thanks for watching and have a great day